so. Uh, so we're going to talk for about 30 minutes. It's going to be conversational. I scribbled some notes that I can no longer read because my hand my handwriting has a half life and it's expired. But we'll we'll we can, figure we it all out. It. I think we've winged it this far. We can probably figure it out. I think we probably said we've been winging it for 12 years. So I think we'll, we can we can keep winging it. Um, so Port Charles. Um, <laughs> So seriously, though, I mean, obviously, I know TJ, you know, hat tip to TJ here on the, on, on, on the Port Charles clips, but, you know, and we tease because it was so pretty and the frosted tips and everything. Wow. But, um, this is not at all what I no. expected. <laughs> okay. But, mm. I, actually, it's interesting, though, because, um, you know, your acting career sort of started there. And um, I would say that a lot of the skills that you bring to your work today had their germination in those those five or so, what was it, about five years? Yeah. You, you yeah. worked on General Hospital in Port Charles? Well, it was a spinoff. You know, it was the times mm -hmm. when ER was a big hit show in, in daytime and, and uh, in, in, in television. And they wanted to do a, uh, like, what? It's a daytime ER. And I remember when I when I got that job, I, I went to ERs around LA and I wanted to watch how they work because that's how I thought it was. And they're eating sandwiches going, yeah, let's just get some units of blood in here. I'm like, should you be eating a sandwich? This is right. And they, they don't panic at all. So it's nothing like television. And there's just horrible things and smells. I remember the smells, <laughs> and uh, which actually we had on the set. But um, that was from a different, different source. Um, but we, we uh, right. I learned that stuff. Yeah, we, right. we, I mean, the fact that's that, where you start. I mean, obviously, we know a lot of very talented actors for sure, but I've never seen anybody be able to look at a page and go, got it, right? That, that, that well, ability to yeah. cold read. And yeah, I don't know what it was. Um, you know, I had been a reporter uh, after graduate school for a year, and, you know, you have to, make, you know, oh, this is what it is, and then you can't really refer to notes, and you're trying to make it up as you go. And, um, I remember being a waiter, I would always try to remember everybody's order, um, even in graduate school. I want to know everybody's order so I didn't have to write anything down. But yeah, there's something about five years on a show where every day you're getting scripts mm -hmm. and you're just expected to know them. And uh, yeah, I think that it was, it was um, I don't like to say it's a, it is a great training ground, but it, that's not all it is. There were some great actors there. I, I, I think some of the bad rap that daytime television gets is a lot of times the, the powers that be um, you know, they, they, there just was this feeling like, did you have the, did the hair look good? Did you, did you have the right outfit? Yeah, you're out there. It's like, well, what about this scene? We were thinking about working it this way. Yeah, 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 whatever you want. <laughs> and so that, you know, that, that I, one of the things that, that frustrated me at times was, you know, I always wanted to try to get better. I always wanted to try to improve. And um, there was just sort of the feeling of like, it's good, status quo, go. Right. And... Um, I think if you can get caught in that trap, then it, it's a, it, it, can be, it can get a bad rap, but you know, we never looked at it that way. No, for sure. And let's wind back even a little further, because I think what's interesting is your path to becoming an actor was so different than, than many people's. And originally, you were in sports. You were an athlete, and that was, you had no thoughts or dreams of, of, of getting into acting. I didn't think acting was a job. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't, you know, you grew up in New England in this little, town and the funny thing is my dad raised me on BBC and I didn't think yeah. you know Americans were actors till I was 12 13 years old <laughs> and because it was all like Bert and Guinness these are the actors and then we watched all those movies we watched you know Doctor Who and, and Faulty Towers and Benny Hill and uh, Patrick McGowan and the prisoner was mm -hmm. one of my favorites and Same. Never understood the balls that came out and got them. <laughs> but they were terrifying. They were terrifying. I used to have nightmares that. about those yeah. things. Um, but it was, you know, um, my older brother said they were condoms blown up <laughs> when I got older. Like, I didn't well, know what condoms cool. were at the so time, but I was like, I don't really want scary. those. Yeah. Um, but, it, but yeah, no, it, and, uh, but no, that was, he raised me with that kind of stuff. And then, you yeah, know, but it just wasn't a, it wasn't a, certainly wasn't a job, but it was something that was kind of out of sight, out of mind. I just was, you know, going outside, playing basketball, baseball, whatever, just, you know, yeah, doing that kind of stuff. But what's interesting is I think some of your, um, I don't know, your, your ethics and your, your philosophies around acting might have started back then. The fact that, you know, when you're on the set, it is very much a team sport. Yeah, well, there's certainly parallels, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I think the... Uh, you know, we, you did what the coach said. You know, he says, run up that hill 10 times, you do it, or mm -hmm. you're not going to play. And 
uh, I think the director's the coach. You know, the, the, the producers might be the management of a team or college, wherever you play. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing I always thought was I always wanted to be better than the last, the, the previous, you know, job you do. Uh, or if you, you know, I was a pitcher, so you know, if I went out and threw a no-hitter, perfect, no, didn't allow a hit. I didn't like kind of rest on those laurels and say the next time I get to pitch, I'll give up five. That'll mm. be fine. No, it wasn't like that. It was like always try to improve on whatever that, that the previous performance was. And uh, I, I think a lot of actors I've seen always seem to outdo themselves. And they, you know, that next performance, mm -hmm. hopefully, is they try to find bring something n different, something new, uh, something better to a role. And yeah, I think that's I, I, I try to do that. Yeah, and look, I mean, I think when I say treating acting like a team sport, I mean, obviously, we've done a lot of ensemble work, mm -hmm, and sure. so much of acting is about working in an ensemble. And being a good listener and being a good partner as an actor, and it's like, to me, there's a big analogy there to being a good teammate, which that might be stuff that you, you learned and, you know, was ingrained early in your life as an athlete. Yeah, I think so. I think I, it's interesting. I. I think I became a better actor through our experience on Uncharted mm -hmm. um, because there were such good actors that we worked with and you had to show up and bring your game. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, honestly, I think... blessed to have Gordon Hunt as yes, our, our as a, uh, mentor, everyone yeah. in this room pretty much. Yeah, yeah, he was really, really special. I mean, just to, to be around that, that group, to, to work with those people, have... You know, I remember reading Gordon's book. You know, uh, one of my favorite things that I tell people, get his book that uh, he, he said, every, after every audition, the best thing to do is set up something, have a, 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 something to look forward to after an audition so you forget about it. And I always thought that was, it was great. It's like, so n the best part of your day doesn't have to be that audition that you're, you're, you know, you're really sweating over. You know, just, you're going to meet some friends. You're going to go do something fun. Yeah. And, um, it's true. It's, it really takes a lot of the pressure off. And, and you know, there's always going to be another audition. Yeah. You know, knock, knock on wood. <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's the no, idea. This is the end. This is your... That's it? We're kind of... Well, that, I know. That's, yeah. I'm a little... I was, it's a little disconcerting. They're You're like, here you go. And, and the moving trucks are at the it's house. It's a little weird, isn't They're, it? They packed up everything. Yeah, when We're, we start getting old, yeah, I know. this starts happening. I know, I know, I know. It's... <laughs> It feels like they're putting your hat on you and pushing you out the door, like I, going, you I, know, I'm you don't like, have to go I, home, but you can't stay here. Yeah, but I gotta yeah. stay here. Yeah, I got stuff I got, to do. I got stuff to pay for. <laughs> I got, gotta go. Uh, not this specifically. I just mean any no, sort of being. I understand. Being fetted. F -E -T -E -D. I know. T E D. I know what it means. No, there's there, there's I an have ID Google. version. I didn't want to make you offended. <laughs> um, so it's interesting, though, we've talked about this before, and this was a big thing that Gordon would talk about, too, is just that feeling of the universe nudging, along, nudging you along the path that you're supposed to take, mm -hmm. that you think this is what you're supposed to do, and, of course, you know, the universe will always yeah. pull the rug out from under you, and, in fact, in hindsight, you'll go, oh, that's because I was supposed to be going this direction. Yeah. And so you felt like that with, with sports and acting, right? Yeah, well, you know, I, I really wanted to play baseball. That was my, my dream. I went to college for it, and I had a, a chance. I hurt myself, and, you know, you think that I get just devastated. Uh, I remember when they uh, released me, they, were, they said, you know, have you thought about getting into coaching? You really know how to... We can't teach you to throw 95, but you know how to pitch, but we can teach a guy who knows how to throw 95. How to, you could teach him to pitch. And I'm like, and choking back tears, my eyes go home. I see my family. Come on, that's all right. You know, just moving on. And um, yeah, it, it was that was everything. And then, you know, I think as a, as a as a young man or any young person, you try to you have this vision of what you want to do and where you want to be. And if sometimes if you just take the oars out of the water and let the current take you, it, it's amazing where you'll go. Um, I love when people ask me, if, like, did you always want to do voiceovers and video games? I'm like, no. They didn't have video. There were no voices in Pong. Did you always want to do mocap? Yeah, you always right. want to do mocap. Yeah. The thing that was invented a few years ago? Yes. Like, you know, what am I, Kreskin? Uh, so it was funny. It just, it, and it's interesting how it just, it, 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 it sort of, it just sort of morphed. And, you know, I always thought, oh, I want to be in movies. I want to do TV shows. You know, especially after starting, mm -hmm. I was here like six, seven months when the Port Charles uh, contract hit me, and I'm painting houses and bartending, and now I'm on a TV show. 
You know, it's, hey, oh, that, that's how this works? Okay, <laughs> I'll figure it out. And it was really one of those uh, fake it till you make it kind of deals. Like, you know, just hope they don't figure out I have no idea what I'm doing. And they didn't, uh, thank but God. I think, again, some of that humility, uh, I mean, all my favorite people <laughs> think they're frauds. And um, <laughs> oh, every, every, I tell people this, every actor, Every actor yeah. has a healthy dose of self-loathing yes. that you have to have. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's like as soon as you lose that, something's wrong, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. When you start believing your own hype, mm -hmm. then it's time to go. But that is a great thing to let young people know because they don't, they don't know that, I mean, people talk about imposter syndrome now, sure. but it didn't used to, right? And so that's something that I've shared too, is like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You're like, I, look, I, I really. I, yeah, but, <laughs> but everyone here knows you do. No, I don't. Yeah, I've been pacing do. in my hotel room all afternoon, going, "Oh my God, why did I say yes?" I've been um, upstairs in a closet crying, we drinking been, bourbon we for eight been hours, pacing and crying together. I just was rocking. Ah. That would have been so much more fun to do that it together. Was. I videoed. I was it. just it's doing fine. it in my underpants, though. So <laughs> I pulled the curtains. Um, so. Uh, Speaking of performance capture, I mean, sure. I think that's also a big part of your career, our careers, actually, that I mean, we got in at the, the ground floor on that. And, and I, I, yeah. I like to think that we're pioneers, that, you know. I, 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 I think it's funny. Right, okay. I'll give that to you. No, it's funny. Um, I remember uh, the first motion capture job I got. At that time, it was mocap. Motion capture, now it's, no now it's performance <laughs> capture. Because <laughs> now it's a performance, it's not just motion. Uh, it's like, okay, whatever you want to call it. Um, I remember I was at uh, Sony, uh, Brandon Akiaton uh, at, at, at Sony had done a game, um, NBA The Life. No, I was not the basketball player, the stud athlete. I was. It was like the Jerry Maguire sports agent. He had this brilliant idea. Just I think he, I think he'd done uh, film school and he wanted to say. He said, "Hey, I think we can make a story out of this." And it was funny because it was the stage. They put uh, big poles up with cue cards because nobody. <laughs> and everybody thought I was nuts. They said, "You're going to drive to San Diego for scale to wear a stupid suit." And I remember thinking, "I this this sounds pretty cool. This might work." It, it seemed like the theater I had done when I was in right. New York. And it's like, but you know, it's. And you know, yeah, I, I'll go down there. It sounded interesting. And I think it's the only thing I've ever kind of gambled on and won with. Because I, then I remember doing it going, this is gonna be cool. And then another job, and then by the time mm -hmm. you were casting Uncharted, I didn't have a, a big video resume other than the poor Charles and I stuff know. I had done. I know, yeah, she wasn't impressed. And uh, <laughs> she wasn't impressed. She said, no, no, she passed on me the first round. When, but I had a bunch of mocap experience. VHS tapes in the mail, I'm like, why are they so? Why? It's just a bunch of soap operas. I, you know, but, but it's got its merits. I know, I'm, I'm not, but I was, <laughs> wasn't quite what we were looking for. No, um, shit. <laughs> It was, wasn't the very Indiana Jonesy. No. And it wasn't any much humor in it. No. I was looking for a funny adventure. And yet guy. I was so happy. Yes. <laughs> but what I had was a post it that was sitting on my kitchen counter in Santa Monica with Chris Zimmerman. Chris Zimmerman. Told me two names. These are mm -hmm. the two guys. Yeah. Chris Zimmerman. Who I wanted uh, uh, to be a, here so bad. Chris Zimmerman, a Gordon Hunt disciple. Yes. Right? Yep. Again, we all It all are. goes back to Gordon. It does. <laughs> all roads lead back all, to Gordon. Yes. Um, and she said, two guys you're going to want to see. One was Robin Atkin Downs. Yes, who and, was in every one of our right, games. And one was Nolan North. Who was this guy. And so I took a shot and I saw that tape and I'm like, what, Chris, is, what is she talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Then you, yeah. And then you came in and then you just won the part. Which, yeah, and people asked me about that audition, and I, I remember the first one was so bizarre because it was, it was at weird. a we place didn't know called. What we were doing yet. Uh, it was the castle. You guys remember the uh, some of the actors? Remember the castle over in Bourbon? It was a Technicolor, but it looked like it? the old castle. And and it, normally an audition is you know for voiceover or something. You go into a booth, the glass, and everybody's on that side. And Amy and Gordon and I think Chris Tick Borders. Chris yeah. Borders. Somebody was in the room. They're telling me about. It. I'm like, okay. They said, whenever you're ready. Use the space. You're like, are you gonna? Space? I said, are you gonna stay in here with me? <laughs> it's a tiny little room. They're like, yeah, use the space. And I'm like, <laughs> what's left I, of it? I've been told not to <laughs> stray from the mic too much. What do you mean use the space? Yeah, for the callbacks, we got it more figured out. Yeah, we got it, a bigger room. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing I, I find interesting, and I tell a lot of people ask me about, you know, I want to get into acting is. I, I probably wasn't the most 
talented actor that auditioned for that part, that person with the best resume or whatever, but you know, I was just the right fit for that role. And, and people always ask actors, like, how do you take the rejection? And I always tell them there's, there's, there's no rejection. You know, you're just either, I, I, maybe it was just my, you know, uh, arrogance of ignorance, but it was just, I just think I'm never gonna be so bad they're gonna throw me out of a room. But I'm just, so if I don't get the part, I'm just not right. It's not that I was bad, it's just you're not right for that fit. Yeah, a lot of people and, and I think with, think with, that, with that, I think with, with Uncharted, that was the thing that I always look back and I'm so grateful for that, for whatever reason, uh, because it is the defining thing in my career, for whatever reason, I was the right fit. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I thank you and, and everyone who made that happen more than anything. Well, I, mean, you're I, the big, I thank you. You're, you're one of the biggest <laughs> reasons I'm here, so. Well, you are. I, I, I have a yeah. piece. Eleven and five six of that. But Eleven and five. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. That's but a lot. It is. <laughs> um, but I will say though, I mean, the other reason that you know you stand out from the pack in, in an audition room like that is because you come in, and you just lay it all out there, right? And it goes back. I keep coming back to the sports thing because you talked about how um, you have to just leave it all on the field, and you know. You're not yeah. worried about humiliating, humiliating yourself as an actor. I do that every day but, in my normal life. Right, and you have to just go like, well, I'm, this might look ridiculous. And, yeah. Right? But, yeah. Well, but you just it, commit, right? Yeah. It's, it, I, mean, it, I can it, tell you, not everybody comes in the room and does that. Well, if people, if you're self-conscious about anything as an actor, then you're going to be in trouble. You just, and, and I, but I always embrace those just that idea of just playing. Oh, I've always said little kids play, are the best right? actors because mm -hmm. they they don't care. Right. You know, you're never going to break their center, you know. <laughs> it's like they're playing pirates in the backyard. Who wants a sandwich? Damn it, Mom. <laughs> All right, everyone, back to zero. <laughs> Tracy, up in the tree, here we go. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't happen that way. You just embrace that play, and, and I think that that's, it's gotten me this far. So well, I know, it's so I'm funny because everybody always now. wants to say, oh, tell us about your craft. What's and your process? You're processing like, your craft, coffee. and I'm like... <laughs> and I always try to... A coffee I, and a poop before get, you get your suit on. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> we try. Sometimes we get a little bound up. Uh, not the cheese. No, um, the, uh, All the people that do mocap in the room laughed at that. It's just yeah. like, you're like, okay, you gotta get... Yeah, you, you think, wouldn't you think they would, those suits would get somewhat more flattering at some point? They never do. My first mocap suit, remember this? Brown. Well, just once. Uh, <laughs> yes, just once, because I burned it. I was Mr. Hanky the Christmas poop. It was one size too small. It was, uh, it was one size too small, and it was just like, wow. And you were I a little I have softic. to go home and apologize to my wife. <laughs> yes. I well, got doughy I, after Dr. Ramsey. Is, I think you were, again, you were so into it, too. You didn't realize quite how unflattering the suit was. Yeah. <laughs> On the is day. that the word we're going to go with? We're going to go with unflattering? But, but when... We... How about uh, 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag? That's, that was... <laughs> this guy. It was when we were doing the ADR for those scenes. Yeah, we watched it. And you're like, whoa, holy oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Could everyone turn around right now? Yeah, it was bad. And you started losing weight right after that. I did. <laughs> I, I had to. <laughs> I was like, fump. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks for putting that up. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, it was awful. It was awful. It was, no, uh, but, it's, but it's a good story. It's, it's <laughs> is it? <laughs> they think so. Okay. Um, but what were you saying about the so process in the morning? Process. Oh, process. Yeah. You said no, coffee but, when we said no, poop. But no, and but then the best part of that there. job was honestly was always being be able to read against really good actors. You know, being up against Emily, mm -hmm. uh, Richard, Robin. Uh, everybody, uh, Graham McTavish. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the um, uh, JB Block is here. JB mm -hmm. Block. I mean, he was so great in in uh, the the, uh, the the PS Vita version. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're working with actors who know what they're doing. You're like, okay, I I gotta pay attention. I can't stink right now. Mm -hmm. Well, it was interesting because I mean, you know, we shot it like a stage play, or like you might even yeah. shoot multi-camera television. I mean, again, thanks to Gordon for some of that inspiration, right? Yeah. We were tr figuring out as we went, there was no rules back then about how to do this. We were, you know, yeah. putting people in the wrong size mocap suits and all that kind of stuff. Small ones. <laughs> Auditioning. I think we went over that. Voice booths. Um, 
So, um, but yeah, that's that sense of play, which I think is so yeah. critical. And the willingness to get out there and go, well, this might be a bad idea, this might be silly, this might make me look ridiculous, but who cares, that's what I'm here for, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the fact that that's infectious, right? And I think that that's also what I mean about the generosity and the collaboration is the fact that, you know, you said once too that when you, I mean, maybe it's the wrong terminology but in, in, in games, but like when you're, you know, number one on the call sheet, or top of show, your job is to be the master of ceremonies, right? And that's something that you always did really well as a lead on the Uncharted series. Well, um, Uncharted was one of the only times, few and only times, well, now it's different. Well, first time, really, where I had that responsibility. And I just remember thinking, uh, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't want it to look like, like Pollyanna, but it, it, there were such good actors coming in, and but it was kind of like our set and and so I'm I'm the guy in all the scenes and but this place is that we had so much fun on that set and I think as we kept it light and happy and I think the casting reflected that we always went in again it went back to like who was the best for the role but who fit that 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 crew that mm -hmm. that gang and everybody we never had we never had a problem with with everybody we cast was so good Everybody was Everybody just. Everybody came to play, right? And they came to play, and and, that, and I and I remember thinking for it was, on the additions, to be honest, is yeah, that, who's willing to play? And I wanted that to reflect that 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 spirit of, I mean, I can't be serious. Anybody who's worked with me knows I, I just can't be. It's like I need to. Uh, okay, now we go. Okay. I, I just can't. If I get in my head, it's going to be just garbage. So I, I, and I usually have to apologize to people if their process is different from that. I I don't want to disturb that. Yeah. But well, I know it's so funny. But I've had. I've had other people in the game industry say, I don't know how to work with Nolan. It's only happened a couple of times, don't worry. Really? Obviously, you're getting work. But they're like, they're like, because he just, he's going and he's going and he's going, and I'm like, you just say action. You know, like, he's... It's kind of like Pavlos Bell. It's like... It is. Ah, da, da, da. Yeah, <laughs> and you're and you're there and you're ready. You can be saying all kinds of crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, I've done And that. then do the most serious emotional scene like that. You're there, right? You're ready. It's so weird, if, right? I just said, if you're waiting for him to finish, he never will. He's gonna, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna fill the time. And, but if you say, action, yeah. right. Now, everyone else on set, meanwhile, is bent over drooling, laughing, literally drooling in some, Richard, he drooled. Remember the one Richard time? Richard drooled. Yeah. I got McGonagall to drool. You've gotten a lot of people crying and <laughs> laughing. So doesn't mean, doesn't mean everyone else is ready when you're ready when we say action. Right. But I did spend a lot of time going, it's all actually, about Gordon me. would go, Nolan, Nolan. As long as Nolan, I was ready. Nolan, Nolan, We Nolan, got the shot. Nolan, Nolan. Nolan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon. Nolan, Nolan. There we go. And then I'd <laughs> drop into my Jerry Lens. Gordon That's and I used right. to hmm, take God girls bless. down to Palm Springs. <laughs> Elky Summer once washed our car. You just make up things and Gordon would be like, I wish that was true. Yeah. It, was, it was the best. It was so I loved when I could, him. when I, I knew when I could get Gordon to crack up, then yeah. I, I was like, okay, now we can do the scene. That's right. He was kind of my, I was just, okay. And when he What's, would go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you always knew you, when, when you got to take, glass. you had the thing, you, you wouldn't even be looking at you go. <laughs> And you're like, okay, we're moving on. Yeah, right. He could, but it was the funny because coming from yeah. all the animation he had done, he would watch a scene a few times, and then you'd see him at the end of a scene just kind of look away, and he was listening to it, mm -hmm. and you just looking at, he'd, and he could hear it, <laughs> it and he was always yeah. right. Yeah. He could hear when the take was right. It was Absolutely. very, very, very impressive. No, I don't want to run out of time. I have no idea how we're doing. So a lot of people couldn't make it because it, well, they're, they're out of town and stuff like that. So I, I asked for some. Anecdotes from your colleagues. Oh, well, you know what? We probably don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so the problem is. No, we really don't need to do this. None of them can be told in, ple in uh, polite company. None of them. Is anybody polite here? Let's nope. see. Nope. <laughs> so who? Can I use the c word? Yes. <laughs> this is being filmed, though. They're going to take the award away. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't given it yet. Sean Connery they giving romantic given advice. It yet? Is that what you said? <laughs> What's that? Sean Connery giving romantic advice. Sean Connery, yes. Uh, uh, my, one of my favorite things. Uh, there's people from the agency earlier. We used to we used to do. Uh, Sean Connery had he not made it, because uh, when we when we used to audition at the agency, you'd, you'd have to go in 
to uh, to the booths at the agency. You know, it was before anybody had a home set up or you could do it on your phone. Uh, and we'd wait for two, three hours, get lunch, and we'd sit there and wait. And uh, there were just amazingly funny people and comedians there, and we would just talk and, and laugh. <laughs> and, and and that was one of them. We, we just said, imagine if Sean Connery hadn't made it. Like, he, he had to come in here, and he'd just walk in, show everyone, yes. So, listen, uh, fingers crossed, I'm up for the new role on Cheetah Girls <laughs> with uh, Raven Simone, very talented. And it just, and, and then somebody else would do their Connery, and then we'd, we'd go back and forth until Jason Connery, who was at the agency, would walk in every morning, like, and then I told her that I was uh, going to get a cup of coffee. Jason, hey, what's up, buddy? I'm like, hello, fellas. And you're like, it's close. It's really on, close. On Uncharted One, you would you would lay on your back on the the mats while we were messing around and setting things up, and you would just quietly do the just the foulest stuff into your mic for whoever happened to still have oh, their yeah. headphones on. No, because it was well, usually think, Connery, but yeah, but it was just. But you'd look over and the guys with the sound, they're they're always listening, and you'd ha you'd be mic'd up, and you just really, and every, no one's paying attention, so you just start you just start doing things, and you just see the guy go. <laughs> and I would try to hide, and, and he was like looking around. Where's that coming from? Like, yes. I see you're wearing something sexy. Yeah. And he's like, and you take him out. Stop it! Just stop <laughs> Do, doing anything. It's, yeah, it's just stupidity. Fred had a lot of stories. Yes, he did. Mm, yes, mouthing the lines the other actors were doing I in like the booth, that. and Jim, Jamie sent you out. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't get, get my out. ride with the volume down on the TV. And that was Fred Tattashore and I. Yeah, we used Fred to Tattashore. watch um, different TV shows, and we'd, we were at San Diego Comic Con, and we would just turn off the TV and just dub whatever we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> and just eating pretzels and doing it. And there's no cameras. <laughs> there should be cameras. That's a show. <laughs> Call Fred. Call my agent. People also said very nice things. And so since so, so many people couldn't make it, and they all sent their their regrets and their love, um, uh, saying you deserve all the accolades. And uh, um, even though, even though I'm like the biggest, darkest pervert, apparently. Well, both. You can, both. Both can be true. Um, <laughs> Is this award like they're going to drip candle wax on it? Some weird kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did want to tell you because obviously, you know, three of your closest collaborators on Special and Uncharted were Graham and Richard and Emily, none of whom could be here. And yep. we're very, very sad about it. Um, Graham said, I'd love to have been there to heckle him as you tried to look dignified. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of people here who can do that. <laughs> That's right. Um, and Richard was so pleased for you. Um, he said, uh, this is really terrific, just stunning. Give him my best and tell him it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah. And then I wanted to give you, I mean, I know I want to take up a bunch of time, but what Emily said was so sweet. Um, and I think just sums you up so well. Um, she just says, she says, she's incredibly grateful to have gotten to work with Nolan on Uncharted for as long as I did. I was always thankful to you and Naughty Dog for the opportunity, but also when I think about it, if Nolan didn't take a chance in his audition to reach out and play in our scene, I'm not sure that chemistry of our characters would have peaked out that day, nor would I have been considered for Elena. Every day at work was like that. A jump into the unknown with a partner who had more imagination, more humor than any of us knew what to do with. I was unaware of what a great talent no one was in the VO industry because I knew nothing coming out of school. I knew nothing of that world. With all his experience, he could have treated me as a newbie. He could have let me figure out a lot of my own. But Nolan always reached out in scenes, always gave back, and always was right there in whatever jungle, desert, town, or treasure fight we found ourselves in. Thank you for hiring him and hiring me and giving us that gift. Um, and most of all, thank you for having him wear that brown mocap suit, even for a day. <laughs> she did. She did. That's sweet. <laughs> so you are very loved. That, um, yes. And, and as we were saying, these things are always weird, um, right? It's, it always feels like you're being eulogized. You're like, I'm still alive, right? I, I, this never happened to me. I, I didn't get anything. I, I, I never got <laughs> I didn't anything. Get anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> um, and you know, you always want to say like, well, this is very sweet, but I'm not done yet. So, kind no, of and I'm not. And, and I, uh, but I can't tell you. I mean, I'll, that was really sweet. She's um, she's a nice she's a nice lady. She's a very nice lady. She's a very special lady. Yeah. No, it's um, 
Yeah, it's surreal. It's it's overwhelming, really. Uh, you know, but you, everyone feels that way about you know, and it's like you know, people don't you know share those things with each other enough. But I mean, I think that's why you're you're so well loved and regarded in this industry because of your generosity. Mm, well, so so what do you want to do now that? I, you know, now that I, you've reached the end of your career. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, the, the, the thing is, is like I said before, you know, this is not the, a side of the business I ever thought I'd be in. It's, it, and I've joked before that it's, it's everything I got in trouble in school for, you know, doing silly voices and messing around with my friends. And the thing is, you know, we talk about my baseball career. I, I, I have friends who played, and we're going to cover Sports Illustrated now. They, were, they played in the major leagues for years, and I never was that good. I never was going to get there. And... We were talking, I was talking to a couple of them recently about stuff, and I said, do you miss playing? He goes, I don't miss playing. I miss the travel. I miss the guys. And I thought back on my career, and my favorite moments weren't playing. They were the bus rides to play Clemson or, or, or Georgia Tech, and uh, sitting in the bullpen, praying you didn't get into the game because you are razzing the other team's right fielder and and uh, you know just uh, you know you know doing uh, i used to do we had this there was one umpire that used to walk and and i used to get up there and and i'd walk back and forth to the dugout and just everyone would be laughing cuz i'd be walking right next to him talking to him but walking like him he didn't know i was doing it <laughs> and and i realized that if you look back it's it was all performing mm -hmm. i was a pitcher I, why wasn't I the left fielder or shortstop or something the pitcher's sat in the middle and the game nothing happens until he does something and it's just my, it's probably just my, that subconscious thing, like, look at me, look at me. <laughs> I'm standing on the highest Yeah, I'm on the highest part. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw this ball, he's going to hit it over that fence, <laughs> which happened way too often. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I think, it, you know, I, my whole, when I look back, you know, uh, I think I was always, always performing for family, doing all that kind of stuff. So I'm just so blessed to be able to do this and that. And then when this this whole part of this world, I've met some of my closest friends are from this industry, especially from this part of the industry. Um, they just are. Uh, and, and some are crossover, like uh, Todd Stashwick, who I met on doing a movie with Matthew McConaughey, Surferdale, baby. <laughs> and it was so cool because everyone's out there and he's cool. He didn't wear a shirt the whole time. That's true. He didn't wear a shirt. <laughs> And I remember going up, I didn't know anybody, I'm only in there for a couple weeks, and there's some big stars. Instead, hi, Todd. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're doing this. You're very good, Todd. Todd. And it was just, yeah, and it's just, it was, and you know, and then we work together in, in so many other things now, so it's, it's, it's just, I really, I know it, I don't want to sound like, you know, cocaine. I don't know, what? candy coated, but it's like I <laughs> really appreciate. I, like, I really a whole no, not show. cocaine. Okay. Where is your head? Yeah. Wow. Listening. Did you ride a bike here? <laughs> um, what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, no. Meaning like she lives a long way. I have to be jacked up to do that. Um, no, I, I, especially the people who showed up and people who couldn't make it. It's, yeah, I, so I mean, many people again, I think so many. It, this is. You know, it, this, like you said, this is a collaborative industry, and you're, you're nothing really without the people you've gotten to work with, the people you, you've learned from by doing and just paying attention. Yes. And I mean, I've had so there's so many people in here tonight that I've worked with, directors, other actors that are so talented, and just my friends. And I thank you guys for being my friend, and um, I thank you for <laughs> busting my chops with things <laughs> like that because. That's when you know you're uh, you got real friends when they just sit there going, "Hey, I saw that new new game, saw a new project. You, you, you're terrible." And I'm like, thanks. That's the person you pull in and you give them the real hug, not that. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, a mic. Well, that is a mic. <laughs> yeah. Do we I'll have tell you, time for Q&A? Sound like an empty or do we shoulder. All the time. Okay, we have about ten minutes for Q and A. If oh. people have questions, I didn't bring my glasses. Yes. I'm a tremendous fan of your work. Uh, I've worked at MoCap for 20 years. So oh, thanks. Watching the evolution of the acceptance of it as in, like real acting has been interesting. Um, specifically with, with Nathan Drake and Uncharted, over the course as the technology has improved, more of your performance has gotten to come out. Um, has How has that affected your acting process in terms of taking it more seriously as, it, as more of it's translated or... 
I've said this before, I think an actor's job is to deliver performance. I don't care if it's on a stage with a live audience or a microphone or a camera. You have to deliver that performance. That's what, like, that's that, Amy was talking about that athletic background. It's like, you go out there and pitch, go out there and throw, do your job. And uh, it doesn't change my process. I, I, I just want to go out and deliver an honest, true performance and, and hopefully, and have a good time in the process. Um, you know, mostly so you can get hired again. People you know, do that. But um, with the technology, I think it just, it, it just helps everything. I, you know, good acting is when you're subtle and you don't. I remember the, the early, early times when mo motion capture started. It was called motion capture, I believe, because they had people in development offices or stunt people, and you'd be like, "Hey, you," <laughs> and they'd be doing these mo. And then you had the voice to that. And you're going, "What? What is he?" And then you try to go, "Hey, you, what's up?" And 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 it's just these big histrionics. You're thinking, "What?" So. To be able to, when they when it evolved into, and, and you know, give Andy Serkis a lot of credit for the fact that he brought it to the forefront of what it is, right? Yeah. Um, and he really, you know, people started recognizing it uh, as what it is. And, and the funny thing is, yeah, games have been doing it for years. And now, it, it, but it got its attention. I don't care how it got its attention. Um, and it became more accepted, more valid. You know, and like you said, people took it as, it's it's pure acting. It's it's the closest thing. It's digital theater. It's we did those scenes with uh, Uncharted or, or or Last of Us. I mean, where you're having heavy scenes with another actor. It's not just a voice performance. And now with the cameras and the the, the headgear and the, the markers on the face, every nuance. So you you're more. Uh, if you're asking technically wise, I think it's you you're much more. It's much more on camera. You know, you every every little the, the nuance, like a little, everything's picked up. I think it makes it um, much more real, much much better. Uh, and it's amazing to me that games that have that ability don't do it, and they still have someone else do the motion cap. You save so. They think it's it's more expensive. But by the time you get somebody here doing the capture, and then you're going to try to marry, it doesn't quite work. It's, 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 you're just shooting yourself in the foot. What do you wish developers knew about working with actors and talent to get the best performances out of them? Uh, <laughs> boy, that seems like it's way above my pay grade. Develop, I mean, what those guys, what they do at the development office is so astounding to me. Uh, I mean, I couldn't and begin. Everybody knows how to work with actors, right? right. They, so, you know, in terms of how it works with actors, yeah. um, I think it, it, any developer just if you just take and if you give an actor the freedom to do what they do, you do your job so well that that designer, that programmer, that artist, they do their job, and you let them do their job. When you get in there, don't go in with a plan. Uh, get what's what, what's written, what you want, what you think you want, but always give the actor time to give you what they have, if that makes sense. Let them, you know, uh, one thing we did on Uncharted, uh, a lot of projects I've worked on, they, they say, we got it, um, what do you guys want to do? You want to take one? It's like, yeah, we be an idea, let's, and let them play, because you, I think developers would be surprised what, an actor can can help bring to if you and they might surprise you. You might think I want this, and and they and they you get that on, on a take or two, but give them the freedom. Take the time. Give them time to explore um, each other when they're doing their scene. Give them time to explore that character a little bit, and give them the opportunity to show them what, individually what they see in the in that because they might surprise you. It, it could be crap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I might do it wrong and say, you love that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> and that's fine. But when you give the, an actor the ability to um, show you what they think and what they, and, and you include them in your process, I guess, yeah, maybe overall that, you include them into the process rather than, you're a hired gun, we have you till now, you eat then, here's your break, do what you're told. I, I, you, I, yeah, I, you won't, you won't, if you do that to me, uh, that's the last time we'll work together. 
not because I'm, I don't want to be a jerk. It's just like, um, I, you, anybody can do what you just asked. Let me show you what, I'll do that, but give me the time to show you what I have too. Mm -hmm. And I think um, you, you'll be amazed what you get. Yeah, unfortunately, so often in game development, we're so used to controlling things. And so people will get onto the mocap stage or the voice studio and they give line readings and they want to control you and say, put your arm like this. And they want to puppeteer you. Um, and so learning what it means to be a good director, a uh, good collaborator, um, you know, all the things that directors know, which is being able to give people objectives yeah. to, to, to fulfill rather than just giving them exactly, you know. Yeah, and a lot of people are surprised to hear that, like, I don't mind a line reading. Run, if, not right off if, the bat, though. No, no, not right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> Unless you're working for South Park, apparently, which is fine because it's brilliant either way. But, like, if, if I'm not getting it and you're going, yeah, we, <laughs> hey, could we just give you a line read? No, no, it's my process. No, <laughs> then fire me. But, you know, I mean, seriously, because sometimes I, I may not understand the full context of what you're trying to get. So, you know, that's advice to actors, too. Nobody here, everybody here's done this as long as I have. But, you know, take a line reading if you're not getting it after a few. It's like, hey, everybody wants to go home. <laughs> you know? No, wait, I'll get it. <laughs> just, 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 the, no, repeat. Then go on to the next one. But, so, it's a collaboration. It's just be friends, be f you know, have a good time. Um, developers should, the last thing I'd say about it is developers just create that, that feeling of collaboration. Everybody's opinion matters. It's one of my favorite things that Richard McGonagall used to say. He said, I've done jobs for 30 years in this business. He said, this is, and it was, just, it was so sweet. He said, this is the only job I've ever had where I felt my voice and my opinion mattered. And it did. And he was so great. And, you know, imagine that, just all of those years. And he, that was the first time that he ever felt that. And it was from, from, from our set. I think that yourself and Andy Serkis are like the two most important people in, in performance capture. Mm. Done. Uh, <laughs> what, what he's done with regards to the Imaginarium and you know, forwarding the kind of technology side for, for film, what are your thoughts on doing the same within games? Because you've both got a unique experience that nobody else has. You know, I, I, thank you. That's that's really sweet. I don't know if I agree with you 100%. I mean, there's just, because, uh, I, again, I'm just that guy who was at the right place at the right time and kind of did it early with other people. And and then, you know, with the success of Uncharted, it blew up. Andy Serkis is just, you know, with his um, celebrity and his talent, he's just blown that world up. Um, you know, the thing with gaming and this industry, and you can help me out with this, but it's, it, it moves so fast. And the technology, if you look at the first, just for example, uh, the first Uncharted that we did was on a PS3, and so was the third one. And the difference mm -hmm. between what Naughty Dog learned mm -hmm. by, you know, just how to get the most out of that processor uh, was astounding. So, you know, now people are saying, well, motion capture, performance capture, whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, what's next? Is it VR? And uh, will VR, will motion capture, performance capture, will capture <laughs> be part of the, um, the next wave in VR? How would that, again, I, I don't know if I can speak on that. I, 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 I just would like, I mean, I just want to continue doing it. I'm, I'm always fascinated at that the first time I did it, I, I did the first, some of the first facial capture for some job, I can't even remember, but they glued uh, like about 118, mm -hmm. I think, little dots. Uh, the little, like, so the, the, the markers that are on the suit, these are mini tiny little ones, like, like and they're all over my face, and they, 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 you know, spirit gum, okay? And they were like, okay, try not to move too much. <laughs> and you'd go, yeah, clink, clink. Hey. All right, let's reset. I mean, two days where they just kept putting on the face to get just, and it was just for tests. Mm -hmm. And if you moved, and then God forbid, you're like, oh no. <laughs> uh, it, it, so um, it'd be interesting to see if they can actually incorporate uh, some of the new stuff that I've seen. Uh, you know, the markers have gone, there's, there's less now. The facial, uh, it used to be if you had a beard, forget it. You can't do facial capture on that. Now you can. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if there's some type of where you can get the markers set to your 
to your to your form. Implants. Uh, well, I, I, was, really I was thinking about doing some implants um, of a different kind. If you no, were but, serious but, yeah. about your craft. Yeah, but it could be interesting. Even if, Or they could digitally you know, somehow scan you in those. All oh, the markers somehow. go away. Some I just don't want to put on the brown suit again. No. It's, it's, I'm sure they still have it hanging there. But it's been, it's been fascinating. I remember I went up and did a test at ILM for them at one point, um, just, just doing some testing. And... You know, there's uh, Davy Jones' claw mm -hmm. from um, the Pirates movies, and and, and uh, you're on that stage and you're doing and and I'm fascinated the people who I get to work with and and because there's I because I, I don't understand that kind of stuff. Like as soon as my math class started having letters, <laughs> you know, I was done. <laughs> I said like the I'm out, I'm out, just done. Um, good one time. Oh, okay, oh, we are I, out of time. We have to give him his statue. <laughs> it's covered in wax. <laughs> can help. Okay. Oh wow. I'll get off the stage because this is all about no, you. No, you stay. <laughs> Don't you leave me. I should stand. So I am honoured to be presenting you with this special award for outstanding contribution in performance in games. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Say something nice. Um, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. It's um, really heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> it is. It's this yeah, is the real say. thing. Oh thank. Oh gosh, you guys are great. No. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Um, I've never received uh, anything uh, like like this, uh, not just this beautiful statue, but this kind of praise. Um, <laughs> it's weird. You got, you got me. Uh, I'm. Uh, Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I know. Speechless. Everybody, I'm, I, I, imagine that. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually speechless, which is not, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, you know, I, seriously, this, um, this, this means a great deal to me. Um, again, my dad raised me on, on uh, a BBC uh, TV and all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, I know this, <laughs> this will mean a lot to him as well, and, and that means something to me. And um, I, I just, I don't have much more to say except thank you to all the amazing talents that are here uh, and, and, and who could make it that have made this possible. Because it is, it is a collaboration. It's not just, you know, I, I, I don't know why it's me. <laughs> but but, but I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. And I just hope that we all get to continue working together. Um, this is not the end. There's a lot, <laughs> got miles to go before I sleep. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to, the, to, to, to uh, sitting out there and, and seeing some of, some of my other friends um, receive such, a, such an honor. I, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Thank you.